Hello internet people. In this video, I'll go through a checklist for creating a website from scratch. With this video, you won't forget any crucial steps before launching your website. I'll show you what is really needed to launch your website and I'll provide links and resources to my favorite tutorials that show you how to do each task step by step. It's showtime. Tape sweat punch. All right. Here is the checklist of tools and tasks you will need to do to get your website up and running. If you want to skip to certain part, just check the description for timestamps of each step. First, you need to find where to store your website. What will be your domain and what software will you be using to create your website? Then we move to how the website will look like, including where to get logos and free images. And lastly, how to track your website and submit your new website to Google. Let's go through each point in more detail. Arnie, what do you think about that? You lie! First of all, you need a place where to store your website. And this is what website hosting providers do. The most common option for beginners is to get a shared hosting from companies like SiteGround or HostPapa, which I'm also using for my website. Or you can sign up for website builder services like Vix, or Squarespace. They have super easy page builders, but you don't have the same control. In terms of price, web hosting companies give really heavy discounts for the first year. You can get a good shared hosting plan for about $60 to $80, but it will go up after the first year to about $180 to $220. And for Vix and Squarespace, it will be starting from $110 to about $140. So you need to just think if you want it easy, then go with Vix or Squarespace. And if you want to have more control and think long term, go with HostPapa or SiteGround as you will be able to customize things and maybe later get a developer to help out with some more complex stuff. I have a video where I compare four different web hosting providers and the video will appear on your screen now. Check the top right corner. Oh yeah, there are also free hosting providers, but I don't recommend using them for so many reasons. But if you're not as fortunate as this dude and you're short on cash, you can sign up for free hosting. One thing you should check if your hosting provider includes as part of their plan is SSL certificate. Both HostPapa and SiteGround include one for free. With it, you can get this padlock in a browser. And without it, you might see a warning page like this. In summary, SSL basically encrypts the data between your server and user's browser. So it's a bit more safe. If your hosting doesn't have a free one, you could also use Let's Encrypt to get one for free. I have a video how to do it and you can check that in the description. Another thing you might want to consider is if you need a business email address. Most hosting providers have an email either included in the hosting or you can get it as an extra. And they are usually about one to two dollars per email per month. Or you can also sign up to G Suite, which is basically Gmail for business. You'll have your domain in the email, but familiar Gmail layout and features. Hey man, what's your email address? Get out of here. Get out of here, man. Brought to you by getoutahere.com. Now, no matter what web hosting you choose, you will need a domain name. This is the second step on the checklist. A domain is basically what you type in your browser. So youtube.com is a domain. The hardest part is to come up with a good domain name. And for that, I have a video for you. I'll leave the link in the description. Now, pretty much all web hosting providers and website builders include a free one year domain if you sign up with them. So you should be good. If not, then I recommend using namecheap.com as they have affordable prices and they offer free who is privacy protection. Without the protection, your personal details will be publicly available in the Whois database, like you see on my screen now. You can get this protection at the website hosting providers too, but it'll cost you like $10 a year. Or you can hide from Whois database like Arnie. If you like this video so far, I would appreciate if you can click on the like button. That will help this video to rank higher so it can help more people like you. Thanks for that. Now, the third step applies to you only if you choose shared web hosting. You will need to use some sort of website management software. By far, the most popular is WordPress. I think like 27% of all websites on the internet run on WordPress. It's easy to use and it comes with free plugins 
for pretty much anything you need. Also, you will find thousands of tutorials on YouTube about WordPress. And WordPress also has a page builder similar to Wix and Squarespace where you can just click and drag elements on the page and you build the page that way. WordPress is free and most hosting providers have a few click installations. All my websites are running on WordPress. I just don't see why you wouldn't use it. Arnie, were you able to get your WordPress working? <laughs> the fourth step is to design your website. If you went with WordPress, you will want to choose a website design. In WordPress lingo, they are called themes. Luckily, WordPress has thousands of them. Some are free and you can get directly in your WordPress dashboard. Or if you want a better looking and with more features, you can choose them from a website like Template Monster or alternatively, you can build your own page with a page builder like Elementor, which is free to build basic stuff. If you chose page builder service like Vix or Squarespace, you will need to build a website using the drag and drop elements or the templates they provide. Please spend enough time on the design as this will be your visitor's first impression of your website. So use other websites as benchmark and try to make it easy for the people to navigate and read your content. And maybe you can be as cool as this guy. Hi, young man. We'll meet again. <laughs> the fifth step is to design your website look and feel, which includes colors, fonts and logo. You can use websites like luca.com or mybrandnewlogo.com where you answer a few questions and it will give you a logo suggestions. This is not free though, but a great way to get inspired about colors and the logo. Or alternatively, you can use online software like canva.com to actually put together your own design. This tool is also useful later when you need to resize and slightly update your website images. If all this sounds too complicated, you can hire someone on Fiverr to do the logo, fonts and colors for you. For example, by searching for website branding you can get a ton of results with various prices. The sixth step is probably the most time consuming. You will need to add the content to your website. That includes the elements on the home page, maybe an about or contact us page, and then any other pages that are applicable to your website, like services or article pages, whatever you need. Now, the text you'll have to write yourself. If you need some inspiration, how to start with SEO optimized content topics, check out the description. If you need images for your website, here are few free and paid sources. I personally like the free pick one, I've used them for some stuff, but the other ones are also great. And you might find high quality pictures like this one. Sexy Bill, cuddling the computer. The seventh step is to install Google Analytics on your website. Some might say this is not a must, but I would lean on a saying, what you can measure, you can improve. With Google Analytics, you'll have basic tracking of website visitors, such as what pages they visited, how much time they spend there, and what devices they use to visit your site. It's really easy to install GA on your website. You just need to sign up for Google Analytics, then grab the code or the ID and paste it on your site. Again, I have a video how to do it on WordPress and the link is in the description. And before you know it, you'll be as sharp as this kid. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. As a step eight, I have search engine optimization check or in short SEO check. You should double check that you have set up your website so that search engines like Google can find you easily and you haven't missed anything crucial. For a video about SEO checklist, when launching a new website, check the link in the description. But essentially, you should check that you have your page titles, meta description, also that your website is accessible by search engines and people on different devices and few other things. No problemo. Once you've checked your SEO, you're ready for ninth and last step, which is creating a sitemap and submitting your website to Google. You don't have to do this, but it will tell Google to index your website quicker and you'll be able to see your website in Google search results. A sitemap is like a map of your website for search engines. It tells how pages are linked and how important the pages are in relationship to each other. Creating a sitemap sounds complicated, but actually on WordPress, you can just install a free plugin or you can use a free online tool to create a sitemap. And submitting your website to Google can be done in Google Search Console. A video of how to do that will appear on your screen now. And this is how Google will process it. 
And here are two bonus tasks you can do after launch. Once you launch, you might have trouble getting people on your website, so you need to invest some money in Google Ads. This is the quickest way to get traffic on your website, but obviously it comes at a cost. I've added a great video in the description on how to start your first ad campaign with Google Ads. If you want to take your Google Analytics tracking to another level, then you can use Google Tag Manager to track clicks, scrolls, and video starts on your website. To dive deeper into this, check the link in the description. My name is Robert, and if you're looking to master the digital world while getting entertained, this is the channel for you. So hit that subscribe button and find the bell icon so that you get notified about new videos. Here are two videos that will help you get started with creating your new website. Moose.